This training system is a triset. We're going to show you a couple different examples of a triset. The first one we'll do is going to be for the legs. Now, when doing a triset, we need to focus on an area of the legs. So it's not just the whole leg. We're going to focus, in our case, on the quadriceps. But you might design a triset focusing more onto the hamstrings or maybe even the glutes. This, the key is here is it has to be three exercises without any recovery period. So we need to consider how we've got the equipment to hand that we can get our client quickly through each, each exercise with minimal rest between. So Chris, the sequence we're going to do today is going to be a barbell back squat. Yeah. When you finish that, if you can put shoulder press the bar back to the floor, yeah. I will then move the bar out of the way. You're then going to grab the dumbbells yeah. and you'll do a lunge with an alternate leg. Okay. Okay? We have to use alternate leg because I don't want Chris to get any chance to recover. If we're using the same leg, one leg is going to rest at this point. So we're going to use an alternate leg fashion. You'll then hold the, keep the dumbbells in hand, come round, and we then do a step up and we add a balance component. Okay. If you're going to add balance components to triceps or giant sets or really anywhere in your workout, we use a rule of thumb which is going from stable to unstable. That way we make it a lot safer, much, much less likely to injure our client. So Chris, in your own time, deep breath. Think about thoracic extension for me, so the heart to the sky, core engaged. Now Chris actually has a fantastic technique of his squat. He's maintaining a neutral foot position, so toes are facing forward. He also has almost perfect alignment of the lower limb in relationship to the spine. So as he flexes down, his shin comes forward and his spine remains aligned. Now realistically, most of your clients can't do this. They're not flexible enough in the uh, gastroc and slayers. So you can move foot positions to help get a better position. Main thing is make sure the spine is always in neutral throughout the entire movement. That's fine, Chris. So into a shoulder press position. Bring the bar forward and lower it down. Okay. From there, if you can turn around and grab your dumbbells, please. So we move the bar out the way of our client. Always consider safety. Do not step over the barbells. So Chris, you're now going to go into your lunge here, please. So lunge first. Lunge, alternate leg. Now you notice I've got a clipboard there. We expect you as a personal trainer to make notes through your sessions, record how many reps your client does, and also plan sessions. Plan your triceps. Don't try and deliver things to the top of your head. You might find the quality of a session start to deteriorate over a period of time. So the key is plan. It's the six Ps. So prior preparation and planning pre prevents. You can find the rest out. We're looking for good performance. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. Keep going. Again, notice Chris's foot is forward. The knee is over the second toe. His core is engaged. Checkpoints of hip, shoulder and ear alignment remain throughout. Now you can see our client's starting to get a little bit fatigued here. The accumulation of these three exercises is really starting to challenge him. One more. Okay, you can come around to the step. So, we're at a component of balance here. So step, let's move this over slightly. Okay, so step up, make sure the foot is neutral to balance. Perfect. Now Chris is going to hold that for just a second or so at the top position, ensuring he's actually balanced. What I'm also looking for is, as well as the alignment of the foot and the knee over the second toe, is that Chris is also making sure his hip does not lift or drop down as he takes the other leg away. So here, he has perfect alignment through the belt line. Also maintaining the checkpoints through hips, shoulders, and ear alignment. Core engaged throughout. Fantastic. Now, if we see our clients either fatiguing, maybe they're getting too out of breath, maybe it might be lactic acid inhibiting them, or it could just be they start to lose stability in this exercise. Whichever it is, if the top client does not have perfect technique and doesn't feel comfortable to carry on, then we would stop at that point. How are you feeling? A few more? Yeah, a few more. It's good, you're working hard. We also have triple flexion here. Chris is also, as he lifts his leg up into flexion of the hip and the knee, he's also drawing the toes up into dorsiflexion. So we always work from triple extension positions through to triple flexion. That's fine, Chris. Deadlift the barbells down or dumbbells down to the bench. And that's finished. That's fantastic. So that's our tricep. Now we'll show you one more tricep. This time we're going to do a tricep for the chest. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a chest press. Now we use the bench as it's here. So Chris, just take a few seconds rest. Get your breath back first. And I'll pass the dumbbells to you. So we're going to do a tricep for the chest. This is going to be using a dumbbell chest press. We're then going to a dumbbell fly. So this is a compound exercise into an isolation exercise. And again, as I said already, we're going to go from stable to unstable environments. So after Chris has done his dumbbell press and then his flies, we're going to use a stability ball and he's going to be press ups and stability ball. However, throughout, we're observing postural checkpoints, alignment to make sure our client is safe and the exercises are effective as possible. Feel ready to go again? Yeah. Okay. He's a fit guy. He's doing well. Okay, I'm going to again pass the dumbbells to you. 
when you feel you have control of the dumbbell, yeah. say, my dumbbell. Safe lifting technique, neutral spine for myself. My dumbbell. Okay. My dumbbell. Okay. In your own time, lower down. Now again, for the purpose of your planning, for your 12-week plan, for your delivery and your practical assessments, we are looking for clients to be taking fatigue on each exercise. And that might mean the first exercise you get quite a few more reps, but as you go through a second and third exercise, you might find your client loses form a little bit quicker or fatigues a bit quicker. So we're always observing the checkpoints. Feet are facing forward. We have Chris on a lower bench, however, we still have neutral spine, core engaged, scapula are gently depressed in the, into the bench to ensure good open posture. We're not holding this protracted position where the pecs might become tight and affect our alignment. His head is also relaxed, making sure the ear is lined to shoulder. Okay, Chris, we're gonna say at this point you're now getting fatigued. I'll take the dumbbell off you. My dumbbell. My dumbbell. Excellent. Now, actually, my fault, stay down there. We're gonna take Chris into a fly. So, weight-wise, I'm actually gonna take him into a slightly lighter weight. Sorry if I step off camera a second. But this is the dumbbells we need to use now. Okay, in your own time, you've got the bars, dumbbells? My dumbbells. Okay. Now the reason I'm dropping the weight down is that your client will be weaker in an isolation exercise compared to a compound. And also, Chris has already just done a set of chest press. So at this point, his pectorals, his anterior deltoid, they'll be starting to fatigue. Make sure, Chris, you don't go down below the line of the shoulder. We also have the elbow pointing down towards the floor, ensuring that we move with pivoting of the elbow. We don't have this rotation where we might find that we're not in line with the force of gravity. Again, checkpoints have been maintained. So make sure when you train your client, you do observe, you do move, you do make sure these checkpoints have been maintained. Make sure the belly button has been drawn down so the client starts fatiguing the core a little bit. Deep breaths, dumbbells come to the top each time. Also make sure your dumbbells are kept out of the way so you don't fall over them, nor your client. Fantastic. At this point, I'm going to say you're fatiguing. I'll take this dumbbell first. Excellent. My dumbbell. Okay, Chris, bring yourself up now. This time, we move the step out of the way. If you could grab the stability ball, please. You're going to go into a chest press on the ball. Yep. Hands nice and wide so you're stable. If you get in position for me. Now, as we go into st stability, it's going to be harder to maintain alignment. You can see Chris just double checking his postural positions there. That's perfect. Off you go. Now, he's using a wide stance, but his hands are at moderate position. If you bring the stance in closer, you'll make this exercise even more challenging. As you can see though, after the accumulation of stress from the chest press, from the dumbbell fly, at this point his pecs are getting really fatigued, so he's not going to get many reps out here. His core might also start fatiguing, keep drawing in for me. Notice he has excellent alignment through the thoracic spine, his ear is aligned to shoulder. That's fantastic Chris, one more for me. And come up. Okay, step forward, up you come. So those were two triceps, one for more dominant towards the quads and the second one for the chest, triceps and anterior deltoid. The key was no rest between each exercise to ensure that your client is in an environment that you can have the equipment either set up or if you're using machines, you can go from one machine to the other without any rest. That is critical. So that was our triceps.